Hello, my name is Jacob Hurd, and this is a brief presentation on explainable AI and layer-wise relevance propagation. So as you may know, deep neural networks have been proven to be an excellent tool in many applications, such as image classification, speech recognition, and so much more. But it can be difficult to get a full understanding of how a deep neural network actually works. DNNs are often treated as a black box. You simply give it an input, and it gives you an output. However, the person working with the DNN often doesn't really know what the DNN is doing, what patterns it's picking up on, for example. Because of this, it can be difficult to identify the strengths and weaknesses of a neural network and how to best make use of it. So the solution to this is explainable AI. Explainable AI is an umbrella term for various methods used to make sense of how a neural network works internally. It aims to present neural networks as less of a black box and provide human readable information on how the AI calculates its output. There are many methods which attempt to explain deep neural networks, but the two I'll be talking about today are sensitivity analysis and decomposition. With sensitivity analysis, we make very small changes to each of the inputs and we observe how these inputs affect the output. If a small change to a particular input has a large effect on the output prediction, it can be said that this input is quite relevant to the output prediction. This method of analysis is one of the easiest to implement because we are still essentially treating the neural network as a black box. But as a result, it is not as accurate as some of the more advanced methods and the information it provides is not as useful. Another method is decomposition. Decomposition also aims to determine the relevance of each input, but it achieves this by analyzing the neural network at a much lower level. There are multiple algorithms for decomposition, but the one I'm gonna be talking about today is layer-wise relevance propagation. LRP aims to determine how relevant each neuron in the network is to a particular output prediction. It starts at the output and propagates backwards layer by layer until it reaches the input. This equation here is for calculating the relevance of a particular neuron, I, in the layer, L. Rj is the relevance of a neuron, J, in the layer, L plus 1, which is the layer after the layer we are concerned about. Xi is the activation of the neuron, I, given a particular set of inputs. And Wij is the weight connecting neuron, I, to neuron, J. Alpha and beta are parameters that should stay constant throughout the whole process. It is important that alpha minus beta is equal to 1, as it ensures that the total amount of relevance in each layer is equal. For simplicity, let's say that alpha is equal to 1 and beta is equal to 0. This simplifies our formula, making it slightly easier to understand. In the numerator, we have the activation of a neuron I multiplied by the weight connecting it to J. In the denominator, we have the same expression, but we are summing it for each neuron i in the layer L. We then multiply this by the relevance of j and repeat it for all j's in the layer L plus 1. We do this for every neuron in the current layer, and then we move back one layer. So now our i neurons are in layer 1, and our j neurons are in layer 2. We repeat this until we get back to the inputs, at which point we now know the relevance of each input to the given output. Here's a rough example of what it might look like in practice. You can see here that this neuron is quite relevant to these output neurons. And the same with these two, these are very relevant to these two, whereas this neuron has very little relevance. This relevance gets preserved and propagates backwards into layer one, where we can see that these two neurons are very relevant and these two are not relevant at all. Finally, we get to our inputs, where it appears that B is our most relevant input, and A is also quite relevant, but C has very little relevance to our output. Now, I'd like to draw your attention to this website, heatmapping.org. It contains a lot of information on LRP and a collection of papers that I found very useful in my research. It also has links to some interactive demos, which I'll use to demonstrate the benefits of LRP. Here is an example of an image classification algorithm, CafeNet. The neural network looked at this image here and was highly confident that this was a picture of a motor scooter. Here, I could choose to run a relevance propagation formula on the result. First, I'll select sensitivity analysis and hit classify. 
As you can see here, a heat map is generated. So for sensitivity analysis, pixels in the image were altered and the effects that this had on the output were recorded. This is represented up here in this heat map where we can see towards the center of the image where the scooter is located, there's a high amount of activity. And in the areas representing the background, we can see a lot of darkness as changing these pixels didn't have much of an effect on the result. However, this heat map is quite noisy and we don't really get a good idea of what the AI is looking at to determine this is a motor scooter. So let's switch over to LRP and compare. The heat map generated by LRP is a lot clearer to understand. Here we can make out the outline of various parts of the scooter that the AI looked at to determine what the object in question is. We can also see that it paid a bit of attention to the bicycles and the road in the background for a few extra context clues. LRP can also be used to compare various neural network models to each other. Here I'll select Google Net and run classify again. And we can see here that this AI pays a lot less attention to the background and focuses more on the subject of the image. It also pays less attention to these stretched pixels at the top and bottom, which are a result of resizing the image. Another application I'd like to show off briefly is handwriting classification. This AI was trained on the MNIST database of handwritten digits. If I draw a digit in this box here, we'll get a classification, 7, which is correct, and a heat map generated by LRP. As we can see, the neural network is focusing a lot on these straight lines that make up the 7, as well as the surrounding areas. If I try to trick the AI, we get some interesting results. This time I've tried to trick the AI by drawing a 6, which kind of looks a bit like a 5. We can see that it cares a lot about this little gap that I've left here, as it's one of the major differences between a 6 and a 5. Ultimately, it determined that it was a 6, probably because of the size of this gap being very small, and the upward angle of this tail end here. It's also looking at this empty space here, where it would expect to see a straight line if it was a 5. These examples give a lot of insight on how layer-wise relevance propagation can be used to understand the underlying logic of a trained neural network. And personally, I think LRP and other explainable AI technologies are a very important and interesting step moving forward in machine learning and AI. Thank you very much for listening. I'll have the links to all the references I used in the description of the video.